Hello, discrete math fans. We're now on to logical form and logical equivalence. What we're going to do is start to learn about formal logic and break down sentences that we write in English into logical parts. The main concept of what we're going to be dealing with in deductive logic is something called an argument form. First of all, an argument is a sequence of statements used to prove the truth of an assertion. In the English language, when you talk about the word argument, it's really just a couple of people or a group of people trying to make their points and bring in some evidence. In mathematics, we're going to have a much more precise and formal definition of what an argument is. It's just going to be a sequence of statements. When we get to the end, we have an assertion. That is the conclusion of the argument. The statements that are leading up to the conclusion, those are called premises. That's a plural word for plural for premise. Now, in order to have some confidence that the conclusion is true, we must have some belief that the premises are true. Now, the main thing that we want to do in this section is make a distinction between the form of the argument and its content. Now, we're not always going to be able to tell whether or not the premises that are involved are true. But what we can do is use formal logic to determine whether the truth of the conclusion follows necessarily from the truth of the premises. That is, if the premises are true, does the conclusion have to follow? All right, let's give an example to illustrate the form of an argument. Let's consider these two arguments. Argument number one, either you will see Olaf in class today or he will oversleep. You did not see Olaf in class today, therefore Olaf overslept. Argument number two, a three by three matrix is either singular or invertible. The matrix U is not singular, therefore U is invertible. You should see that the structure of these arguments is the same. They're discussing completely different things. One is talking about somebody named Olaf who is sleeping. The other one is talking about matrices in linear algebra. But they are the same form. They follow the same pattern. So we're going to use letters like P, Q, and R to represent the components' sentences. We're going to use the expression not P to represent the sentence, it is not the case that P is true, or maybe simply P is false. Now, the two arguments that we saw have a common logical form, and here's what that form looks like. P or Q. Not P, therefore Q. So. Pretty soon, we're going to talk about what it means for an argument form to be valid. Now, this particular argument form that we discussed is called a disjunctive syllogism, and that's going to come up later on. And in fact, it is a valid argument form, but then we have to discuss what that means and how do we show that an argument form is valid. Okay, that's all for now.